morning everyone. I hope every, everyone is doing good. Tayo po ay maganda ng ating puso at kaisipan as we worship the Lord our God even today. Let's welcome our praise and worship team.
Good morning, Southern Light. Let's open our Bibles to Psalms 100. And let's read it from there. Psalms 100 says, Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all ye land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, and his mercy is everlasting. And his truth endures to all generations. May the Lord add blessing to the reading of his word. The herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King Peace on earth and mercy mild God and sinners reconciled Joyful all ye nations rise Join the triumph of the skies with angelic hosts proclaim Christ is born in Bethlehem Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King Christ by high heaven adored Christ the everlasting Lord late in time behold him come offspring of a virgin's womb veiled in flesh the Godhead see hail the incarnate deity peace as man with man to dwell Jesus our Emmanuel Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn heaven-born Prince of Peace, hail the Son of Righteousness, light and life to all He brings, risen with healing in His wings. While He lays His glory by, born that man no more may die, Born to raise the sons of earth Born to give them second birth Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King His name is Jesus morning, we are blessed to have Pastor Gary Selis to share to us God's Word. Pastor Gary is the Administrative Pastor of Ictus Fellowship, Ictus Church in Makolo. Magandang umaga mga kapatid sa Panginoon sa Southern Lights Community Church. Pagpapala sa inyo galing sa Panginoon at sa amin lahat dito sa Ictus Bacolod. 
Kami ng pamilya ko ay tumira sa Quezon City noong 1999 hanggang 2007 at nakakamis ding magsalita ng wikang Tagalog. Pero mas maganda pa ring magsalita ng Ilonggo. Di ba, Vince, kapatid? At mas maganda ang Ilongga. Salamat po sa privilege na makadala ng mensahe ng Panginoon sa kanyang salita sa umagang ito. Ang ating meditation sa umagang ito ay mula sa libro ni Habakkuk. Sana this meditation from God's Word will bring freshness to you amidst the adversities today. If you have your Bibles with you, basahin po natin ang mga verses sa ilang chapters ng Habakkuk. Habakkuk chapter 1, the following verses. The oracle that Habakkuk the prophet received. How long, O Lord, must I call for help, but you do not listen? Or cry out to you violence, but you do not save? Why do you make me look at injustice? Why do you tolerate wrong? Destruction and violence are before me. There is strife and conflict abounds. Therefore, the law is paralyzed and justice never prevails. The wicked hem in the righteous so that justice is perverted. Verse 5, look at the nations and watch and be utterly amazed. For I am going to do something in your days that you would not believe even if you were told. I am raising up the Babylonians, that ruthless and impetuous people who sweep across the whole earth to seize dwelling places, not their own. They are feared and dreaded people. They are a law to themselves and promote their own honor. Jump to verse 12. O oh Lord, are you not from everlasting, my God, my Holy One? We will not die. O oh Lord, you have appointed them to execute judgment. O oh Rock, you have ordained them to punish. Verse 13, your eyes are too pure to look on evil. You cannot tolerate wrong. Why then do you tolerate the treacherous? Chapter 2, verse 1. I will stand at my watch and station myself on the ramparts. I will look to see what he will say to me. Let's jump to verse 2. Then the Lord replied, Write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets, for the revelation awaits an appointed time. It speaks of the end and will not prove false. Though it linger, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. See, he is puffed up. His desires are not upright. But the righteous will live by his faith. Indeed, wine betrays him. He is arrogant and never at rest because he is as greedy as the grave and like death is never satisfied. He gathers to himself all the nations and takes captive all the people. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word that will inspire us, encourage us, teach us, and guide us as we navigate through life. Salamat po sa presence niyo at sa mga nakikinig. Salamat po sa Holy Spirit niyo na mag-enlighten sa kanila. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There is a story of this preacher who did not know how to swim and he fell sa ocean at naswept away siya. Habang pa nandyan siya sa dagat, a ship passed by him and the captain asked, Sir, do you need help? The preacher answered, No, God will save me. Then a little while, a fisherman is boat passed by and asked the same question. Sir, do you need help? Ang sagot ng preacher ay ganun pa rin. No, God will save me. Eventually, ang preacher got drowned at namatay 
at pumunta sa langit. Then he, uh, he asked God, Why didn't you save me, Lord? And God answered him, I sent you two boats and you didn't want to be saved. Ask me later of the moral of the story, but the point I would like to highlight is how the preacher thinks about life and God. His thoughts are fixed only sa expectations niya kung sinong Panginoon that God will really save him that he disregarded the two men sent to help him. Maybe he wanted to have a supernatural thing to happen that he missed the most natural salvation to come at his side. Ito po ay parang story rin ng Israel, the chosen people of God who chose to trust in human kings rather than the God who committed himself to lead them and care for them. The human kings of Israel. When this, this started, I think nagsimula ito nung nasa Mount Sinai, when Moses went up to the mountain of God, and they witnessed with their eyes and ears how powerful God was with all the thunders and lightnings, how holy God is. And after some time, Israel confessed to Moses that they are so afraid of God that they wanted a human king to rule over them. And interestingly, pinagbigyan sila ng Panginoon. He had Samuel anoint Saul. And the story was that Saul became a disaster. Ano ba talaga ang nangyari after King Saul? The rest of the history of Israel were kings who were mostly described as they did evil in the eyes of the Lord. And at the same time, Israel was also guilty of that. With these evil deeds of Israel and their kings, anong ginagawa ng Panginoon, ang ginawa ng Panginoon? God allowed pagan nations to invade the land and carry Israel as a people into exile. The prophets like Jeremiah and Habakkuk, whom we meditate on this morning, were sent to warn Israel to repent and turn their back from idolatry. But just like the human kings, Israel continued to live in sin. Habakkuk was there to warn them. Jeremiah, at the same time, who is a contemporary of Habakkuk, was also there to warn them. Sa story natin sa preacher na nalunod, Habakkuk and Jeremiah were like the two people sent to Israel to save them from drowning. And our meditation today will have three points to ponder. Number one, the silence of God. Number two, the surprises of God. And number three, the sovereignty of God. Let's go to the first point. The silence of God is explained in verses 2 to 4 of chapter 1 of the book of Habakkuk. Basahin natin uli. Sabi ni Habakkuk the prophet, How long, O Lord, must I call for help? But you do not listen. Violence is everywhere, I cry. But you do not come to save. Must I forever see these evil deeds? Why must I watch all this misery? Wherever I look, I see destruction and violence. I am surrounded by people who love to argue and fight. The law has become paralyzed and there is no justice in courts. The wicked far outnumber the righteous so that justice has become Perverted. The New Living Translation stated that. But there is another translation in the contemporary English version that I would like to read. Sabi niya, Our Lord, how long must I beg for your help before you listen? How long before you save us from all this violence? Why do you make me watch such terrible injustice? Why do you allow violence 
lawlessness, crime, and cruelty to spread everywhere. Laws cannot be enforced. Justice is always the loser. Criminals crowd out honest people and twist the laws around. Ito yung situation ni Habakkuk when he came in as a prophet. There was injustice, violence, lawlessness, crime, and cruelty. People are suffering because of the pandemic. Pero we know that some people are taking advantage of this. Some have become rich. Others, very rich. Some made a very big profit. While the nurses are resigning because the pay is low, and the risks are getting higher and higher. Kahit sinulat ito centuries ago, we find that the issues that Habakkuk the prophet and Jeremiah dealt with are quite similar to ours. There are wars, unimaginable suffering. There is injustice. You would hear that every now and then. Poverty is also everywhere. There is social disparity. The poor getting poorer, the rich getting richer. The leaders are corrupt. Maybe during election also, what are they doing is exactly what is happening to our country. And all this in the seeming silence of God. Such that the opening verses of Habakkuk, ang pag-cry out ni Habakkuk, I, how long, O Lord, how long shall we wait? The same time we cry also, how long, O Lord, will our country remain like this? Habakkuk asked the Lord hard questions, just like Job who suffered from not doing anything. At ang isang reality sa ating Panginoon is that he is a God who is silent. Yes, He is a communicator. He speaks to us in many ways, but He speaks also by being silent. The book of Psalms testify to this. In Psalm 35, sabi ni David, O Lord, you know all about this. Do not stay silent. Do not abandon me now, O Lord. In Psalm 83, the psalmist said, O God, do not be silent. Do not be deaf. Do not be quiet, O God. Then in verse 13 of chapter 1 of Habakkuk, sabi ni Habakkuk, Your eyes are too pure to look on evil. You cannot tolerate wrongdoing. Why then do you tolerate the treacherous? Why are you silent? while the wicked swallow up those more righteous than themselves. Habakkuk is crying out to God on what is happening about, around him. He cites the evil that is all over Israel because of corruption, because of greed, because of everything that is evil. And yet, ang Panginoon ay tahimik lang. And we are not new to this experience. We all, in a way or another, went through times that God is not speaking or making a move or sending even small signs that He is there. But we know that God is there. He may be silent. He is a God who prefers to wait. He is the God who prefers not to speak at certain times. So ang tanong, ano ang gagawin natin in these times when God is silent? Maybe just like now, in the midst of this pandemic. Number one, we should accept the truth that God chooses to be silent. He is God. We are not. But number two, it, the silence of God does not mean He is not at work. We will never comprehend, maybe now, what God is doing. 
But we know that God is always at work. Number three, sometimes the situation may get worse before it gets better. This is easier said when we are in the midst of these difficulties, of sickness, we are crying out to God. Kailan pa po, Panginoon, kayo mag-work o mag-move o magsalita? And number four, trust the Lord. Even if He seems absent and does not say anything, our trust remains in Him. When I got infected with COVID August last year, it was one of the worst times of being sick. I was helpless, I was weak and disoriented. And I have longed to hear from the Lord for assurance that I will be okay and that my family, my wife and children will also be okay. I will be healed and the sick feeling for several days will come to an end. So I read the Bible, trying to find a verse or passage that will speak to me directly. Wala. I listen, listened to hymns in YouTube, and I did not have the strength to finish the song. I tried to pray, and hopefully will hear a voice telling me it will be okay. Pero wala din. For 10 days, God was silent in all this week, these days that I was sick. So what sustained me? It was the word of promises of the Lord. His promises that I can recall to mind, and I hanged on to them. Promises that God said in His holy word. And I told God, I will cling to these promises of yours, whether I will get healed or not, because these are your words, and your words will eventually be fulfilled. But in the meantime, I was suffering, hoping, and praying in silence, in the midst of the silence of the Lord. Is God forever silent? No. Is He at work if we don't, even if we don't see it? Yes. And sometimes when He gives an answer, it will surprise us. Habakkuk was crying out to the Lord, How long, O Lord? How long will you act? How long will this injustice end? How long will the deaths stop? How long will the lagai stop? And in verse 5 to 11, sinagot ng Panginoon si Habakkuk. The second point of our meditation this morning is the surprises of God or the unpredictability of God. Verse 5. The Lord replied, Look around the nations. Look and be amazed. For I am doing something in your day or something you wouldn't believe even if someone told you about it. I am raising up the Babylonians, a cruel and violent people. They will march across the world and conquer other lands. They are notorious for their cruelty and do whatever they like. Their horses are swifter than cheetahs and fiercer than wolves at dusk. Their charioteers charge from far away, like eagles they swoop down to devour their prey. On they come, all bent on violence. Their hordes advance like a desert wind, sweeping captives ahead of them like sand. They scoff at kings and princes, and scorn all their fortresses. They simply pile ramps of earth against their walls and capture them. They sweep past like the wind and are gone. But they are deeply guilty, for their own strength is their God. Verses 5 to 11 says two things. Number one, according to the Lord, He is telling Habakkuk something is about to happen that even Habakkuk will not be able to believe. Number two, and this something that will happen is that the Babylonians will be used to discipline Israel. And this is the kind of people they are. They are cruel and violent. They do whatever they like. 
they are bent on violence. They scoffs at kings and princes, and their own strength is their God. So the background where Habakkuk is coming from, how long, O Lord, will Judah continue to be corrupt, evil, and unjust? God answered by saying, if Judah is evil and corrupt, I will bring a more evil people to destroy them, to teach them a lesson. In a sense, sabi ng Panginoon, kung nanggigigil ka sa gobyerno o ahensya ng gobyerno ngayon, and you ask the Lord to bring an end to the corruption and evil, the Lord answered your prayers by bringing in the Taliban or the Abu Sayyaf to rule over you. And this leads us to two questions. Number one, can God use something evil for his own purposes? And the answer is yes, a big yes. The evil and good are not equal. The powers of God are never equal with evil. Evil is always under God's reign. Remember the story of Joseph the dreamer. After being sold into Egyptian slavery by his brothers, God used Joseph to provide food for the world during famine. Then Joseph's brothers who came to Egypt asked for forgiveness. And this is the reply of Joseph in Genesis chapter 50 verse 20. As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, to bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. God used the enslavement of Joseph for the preservation of lives around the world. Another one, on Good Friday, the most despicable, vile, and evil act ever was committed. The Son of God was crucified. But God used it to accomplish His eternal purposes as recorded in Acts chapter 2. Jesus, the God-man, was sinless, yet He was condemned as a sinner and hung on a Roman cross. In His perfect life and crucifixion, He satisfied the wrath of God and made way for sinners to be forgiven and made right with God. Can God use evil for his purposes? The answer is yes. But according to James chapter 1, God is not the author of evil. And again, evil or Satan is never equal in power with God. So when we look at this pandemic, there was a time that Pastor Joe preached to us about what God is doing in this pandemic. The answer is God will accomplish His purposes. That of preaching the gospel and discipling one person at a time. Number two question, can we expect God to answer our prayers in the way we want it answered? Ang answer is no. Because we have an unpredictable God. The surprise that comes when God is at work is that we can never predict Him. Perhaps we will never understand it that God will always accomplish His purpose no matter what. Ang ating Panginoon ay hindi natin ma-predict. He cannot be managed. Habakkuk must be so surprised to the answer that his prayers was not aligned with his understanding of who God is. Sabi ni Habakkuk sa verse 12 of chapter 1, O Lord my God, my Holy One, you are eternal. Surely you do not plan to wipe us out. O Lord our rock, you have sent these Babylonians to correct us, to punish us for our many sins. But you are too pure and cannot stand the sight of evil. Will you wink at their, at their treachery? Should you be silent when the wicked swallow up people more righteous than they? Habakkuk believes 
and trusts God, but he doesn't fully understand the answer. Kung taga Southern Lights si Habakkuk, ang sagot niya sa sinabi ng Panginoon ay, Talaga Lord, di ka nagbibiro. Gagamitin mo ang Babylonians. In verse 13, sabi ni Habakkuk, God hates evil. And he is amazed that God would use a nation more wicked than Judah to punish Judah. Even though Judah has its own problems, according to Habakkuk's understanding, di hamak na mas okay siya kaysa mga Babylonians. But why would God use a greater evil to discipline evil? Why is God's answer like this? Why would God not give in to our prayers that this brother or sister of ours will be healed from COVID? That this family will be spared from this pain and suffering? I remember the story of Martha and Mary when they sent a message to Jesus saying that the one he loves, Lazarus, is sick. And Jesus waited for days. And so Lazarus died. And both sisters blamed Jesus that if only he had come, Lazarus would have not died. But Jesus had other plans, and it is for the glory of God alone and for the people to believe. Death is evil, but God can turn it into something good. Do you want a predictable God? Do you want all your prayers to be always answered? Do you want your struggles to end the soonest? I do. Gusto ko. Sickness, do we want sickness to be healed in just one prayer? Ako din. That would really be good. But where would faith come in? Our faith is tested in the silence, the experience that we experience with God. Our faith is tested in the surprises or the unpredictability of our God. So what did Habakkuk do after his second set of questions to the Lord? Sabi niya sa verse 1 ng chapter 2, I will climb to my watchtower and stand at my guard post. There I will wait to see what the Lord says and how He will answer my complaint. Dahil kilala ni Habakkuk ang Panginoon, He will continue to wait on Him and trust that God knows what He is doing. Our last point, found in chapter 2, verse 2 and following, is entitled, The Sovereignty of God. Verse 2, Then the Lord said to me, Write my answer plainly on tablets so that the runner can carry the correct message to others. The vision is for a future time. It describes the end that it will be fulfilled. If it seems slow in coming, wait patiently, for it will surely take place. It will not be delayed. Look at the proud. They trust in themselves and their lives are crooked. But the righteous will live by their faithfulness to God. Wealth is treacherous, and the arrogant are never at rest. They open their mouths as wide as the grave, and like death, they are never satisfied. In their greed, they have gathered up many nations and swallowed many peoples. But soon their captives will taunt them. They will mock them, saying, What sorrow await you, thieves? Now you will get what you deserve. You become rich by extortion, but how much longer can this go on? Suddenly, your debtors will take action. They will turn on you and take all you have while you stand trembling and helpless because you have plundered many nations. Now all survivors will plunder you. These verses can be summarized in one thought as God's answer to Habakkuk's plea. Don't worry, Habakkuk. The Babylonians will de will themselves be destroyed after I have used them. 
And this came true. Babylonians swept into Jerusalem. And after some time, history recorded their destruction. In verse 5, Babylon is compared to a drunkard whose appetite is never satisfied. One night, in all their drunkenness, from their king Cyrus, uh, from their king, not King Cyrus, from their king down to their soldiers, to their peoples, to the generals and everything, King Cyrus of the Persians went into the Babylonian city and destroyed them. And Babylon was never heard of after that. God is king. God owns the nations. The Bible has always been clear about this. That God sets up kings and disposes them. That the nations are nothing before the Lord. Because our God, whom we trust, is the sovereign Lord of all. He owns this world. He owns this universe. He owns our nations. He owns our cities. He loves our families. He loves you and me. He rules us and is in control of circumstances, even though some people may say he is not. Habakkuk the prophet tells us not to take things just as they are. Habakkuk says, view things from the eyes of faith. And our eyes of faith is not like the bahala na attitude of us Filipinos, which is simply an expression of default for the lack of better alternative. This faith is founded in Yahweh, who is faithful to His word, because God declared that this in Habakkuk, that the righteous will live by faith. Our trust is our, in our God who is sovereign. Verse 17 of chapter 3, faith enables Habakkuk to say, Even though the fig trees have no blossoms, and there are no grapes on the vines, even though the olive crop fails and the fields lie empty and barren, even though the flocks die in the fields and the cattle barns are empty, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in the God of our salvation. In chapter 1, Habakkuk was very low. He was despairing because of the evil around him. In chapter 2, he goes up to the watchtower to wait for the answer of the Lord. In chapter 3, we see him praising God. And the last phrase of the book says, And makes me walk on my high places. Habakkuk now understands and offers a prayer of praise because he realized that God is in control. To summarize our meditation today, this morning, mga kapatid ko sa Southern Lights, God sometimes seems to be inactive, silent, but He is involved. Our God is holy. He will not tolerate evil. This pandemic will come to an end. God hears and answers our prayers. He will do it on His own way. Because God answers our prayer not in the way we expect it to be. May we all continue to trust the Lord, to persevere under the present difficulties and pain, to keep on obe obeying the great commission of Jesus, making disciples one at a time, because He will come again, and may we be all find, found faithful in Him. Amen and amen. Can I pray for you? Panginoon, salamat po sa reminder ninyo sa amin that you are God. And you are in control. And in the midst of the silence that is happening today, with all this suffering and pain, we know that you are at work behind all this. And we put our trust in you. Thank you, Lord. 
we bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Good morning. We now come to the part of worship and giving. Let me read 2 Corinthians verse, uh, chapter 9, verse 7. You must each decide in your heart how much to give. And don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure. For God loves a person who gives cheerfully. So for our worship and giving, let us pray. Lord God, thank you for your love. Thank you for your care. Thank you for everything, O God. Truly have you blessed us so much, more than what we could ask or imagine. And as a response to your kindness and your love, that was to offer to you, O God. Cheerfully, O God, what I have in store for you. Please bless our offering, O God. And may you please uh, use this offering, O God, to be able to refresh others, to reach, us, to reach out others, and to be able to help others, O God, especially for those who are in need within our family, our, within our church, within our relatives, neighbors, friends, and fellow men. Please, O Lord God, uh, accept our offering and may you please bless them. Thank you, and all these things we ask in faith. In the sweet and mighty of your Son, the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord for this day, and it's my prayer that every one of us receive the blessings from Him. But don't go without that goal to share this blessing to others. May the Lord continue to bless you. See you next Sunday.